Saturday night, talking about money, 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 money. My hair is looking crazy. I didn't brush it or do anything. I've been doing statistics homework all night long. Okay, Mark, thank you for the first Super Hearts of the broadcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome to A Moment in Time with Taylor, talking about money, one of my favorite topics to discuss because I did not grow up with money, and I have figured out how to do some interesting things with money, and I like to read books about money and share them with you guys because I know there's a lot of you out there that wish that you knew more about it as well. Let me slow down. Thank you to everyone on this list for supporting this channel over the last 30 days. I literally could not be here without you guys. We are making significantly less money this year than we made last year on this channel, so the future of this channel is kind of in jeopardy. I appreciate everyone who's made it possible thus far. If you do find value in this broadcast or any of our other broadcasts that I've done over the last two and a half years, whether you're seeing them on YouTube or on Periscope, we're live on both of those platforms right now. It really helps us out if you click the link nextjuice.com slash support in the description and help us to keep going. Super Hearts also help on Periscope. Uh, Tater says, I know how to spend money, just not make enough, right? So most people don't really have uh, trouble with spending money. Uh, some people have a problem with spending too much money. That's not my personal problem. I, I'm more of a saver than a spender, so I feel very lucky about that. By the way, Mark Mankind, first comment of the broadcast on Periscope. Nelson, first comment of the broadcast on YouTube. Hey, Mark Gage. Hey, Rody. Um, Bear says, I make $40,000 a month. What do I do with it? Well, tell me what you do with it right now, and I'll tell you if I think it's a good strategy. So this book is pretty new. It was written in 2018. I'm recording the, or streaming this live September, technically September 29th, because it's 2 in the morning right now. I've been buried in homework all day today, and it's just very, it's been a bit overwhelming with the workload that I have. I'm taking six classes this semester, 18 credits, and two of the classes haven't even started yet. So we'll see. Hi, Jenna, thank you so much for saying that. I appreciate that. Student loans are 3300 a month. Okay, but that's not so that's not a problem. If you're bringing in forty thousand, it's not. I'm not asking what your expenses are. I'm asking what are you doing with your money right now, the money that you're not spending. <laughs> I mean, if you're already spending all the money, then I would say that you shouldn't be doing that. But uh, it's. I would need to know what it, what your expenses are, where you're wasting the money. I'm not going to advise you not to pay your student loans back. Um, okay, so this book is Financial Freedom, A Proven Path to All the Money You Will Ever Need by Grant Sabatier. Now, I read a new book pretty much every single week. I read 52 books a year, and I review them here live on Periscope, on YouTube. They're pretty much all self-development, business, psychology, financial type books. They're all about getting to the next level in your life or the next level, <laughs> and I take... Um, gifts from books. This is actually the book I'm reading right now, Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos. This was a gift from Soapy Shara. Thank you so much, Shara, for sending me this. I do have a whole list of books on my Amazon wish list at that same link, nextjuice.com slash supports. About $15,000 left over. Okay, so what do you do with it right now? The f good that you maxed out your 401k. That's excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, you know, so I'm not even halfway through my math work, but I do commit to going live every single day, seven days a week for three hours a day, and I have 54 minutes left today. And I promised I would do the review on this book tonight. So here we are, and I'm going to be up until the wee hours of the morning. It's already the wee hours. I'm going to be up to the larger hours of the morning working on my math homework and working hard to get my degree so I can create a way to earn more income and create more wealth. Thank you, Jenna. Um, I am not always positive and upbeat, but I do consciously try to keep myself in that stage because I know that's when I'm most productive and that's going to release dopamine, the neurotransmitter, into our brain that's related to drive and motivation. And we're not going to feel driven and motivated if we don't have a good amount of dopamine in our brain. So our prefrontal cortex, this is going into a review I did recently of the self-driven child. I also, if you guys aren't already signed up, I highly encourage you follow this channel, subscribe to this channel, but if you're like me, you don't watch a ton of videos, you don't always keep track of everything, but I personally do keep pretty good track of my, excuse me, my emails. So as a business owner, I have created a way to send you guys emails for free that are very, very low uh, invasion and very, very high value. So I email you three times a year. <laughs> <laughs> Once every four months, that's the only emails you're going to get from me unless something happens to one of my channels and I need to tell you guys, oh, I got shut down and, you know, we're somewhere else. But that's never happened so far, so 
knock on wood, that never happens. But otherwise, I only use it to send you book reviews and summaries of all the books I've read over a four month period, which is on average about 16 books. Since starting classes, my last one, which went out last week, was only eight books. So I'm sorry, I'm working on it. I'm gonna make sure to have the 52 done by the end of this year. And the last one I sent out before that had 22. So kind of balances each other out there a little bit. That means we're only like, you know, two off there. But I'm reading a lot of big books too, so, and I'm really like diving into these and enjoying these. And this one, even though it's not as big as the one I just showed you, the one I'm reviewing tonight, it uh, has a lot of practical information in there and I wanted to kind of pause and do the work before moving through the book so I didn't forget or leave out any of it. But luckily he does review it pretty good throughout the book and at the end of the book it is he does kind of review everything that you need to do. Frankie, thank you so much for the super hearts. I can't tell you how much that means to me right now. We just canceled the content creator program earlier this week and I'm feeling a bit naked without my team and feeling like I love this channel and I love doing this so much and I really hope I can still do it uh, but I have to make like, a certain amount of money to justify doing this over just working a regular job and being able to, you know, max out a 401k like Bear was talking about. Thank you, Eunice. I did donate 45 to Next Juice. Oh, did you, Jenna? Wow, when was that? I'm sorry, I don't recognize your username, Jenna Bush. Did you change your, um, your, your username? Support for as little as five bucks. Oh, thank you, Mark. Uh, so this book has a lot of good stuff in it. I know I'm kind of a mess right now. Bear with me, I'm doing my best. I do think that the content's really valuable. Don't mind how I look at the moment. And hopefully my boob isn't gonna pop out. I have a safety pin, can you guys see it? It's a safety pin holding this shirt together right now. <laughs> Hold on. My life is being held together by an, almost a thread. <laughs> anyway, anyway, okay, financial freedom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda go through the chapters of the book and tell you what it's about. And you may or may not even need to read this book. Now, I'm sorry, Mr. Sabatier. I do hope that people patronize you and buy your book, but a lot of this stuff is, is kind of more philosophical. And once you have the information, you can just do it. You don't necessarily have to read the book. That's the beauty of what I do. Hi, I'm Taylor, and I'm trying to help you guys out. I read books and I tell you what they say so you don't have to spend the time reading them because it takes a few hours per book to to kind of get in there and read the information so I try to make it in, in a palatable understandable way I do do it live so I'm reading a lot of comments it takes me a while to get through it sometimes that's why the email is the best thing and you sign up for that just right at the website nextjuice.com it's on all the pages you just put name and email I don't care if it's your real name as long as it's an email that you actually get so that you get the the summary and reviews of all the books that's fine by me and it's really it's just a way of keeping it a little bit more condensed than my Talk, 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 talk. Um, Frankie, you still haven't gotten it? That's crazy. Frankie has some weird address, and every time he tries to order something, it takes like 10 weeks for anything to show up. Uh, oh, Hot Pursuit, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. I remember that, I used to have that game on PlayStation, actually. <laughs> Throwback, all right, focus, Nelson, focus. So uh, chapter one is Money is Freedom. I totally agree with that. I think Ty Lopez calls dollars freedom units and money is so powerful to creating freedom and freedom is one of the most important things to all humans. We really, really struggle against any time we feel like we're not in control or like we're being limited or we're being controlled by someone else and anytime someone's trying to limit our freedom. So if you have more money, it's harder for people to control you. Sometimes people feel like they have to go to their work, their jobs, even though they hate their jobs because they have to pay their bills and they're very much feeling like they're not free because of the lack of money. So the more money you have, the more freedom you have and it's really, really awesome to have it, really powerful. Now on Periscope, I put in the title, what are your wealth goals? So whether you're here on YouTube or Periscope, I'd love to know what your wealth goals are if you'd like to share them with us. And I'm gonna read you his little categories of financial freedom in, in just a minute. So that chapter, what he talks about that's the biggest takeaway is that he had $2.26 in his checking account at one point. $2.26 and he took a picture of that, a screenshot, and printed it out and he pinned it, I forget where, let's say on his refrigerator where he would see it all the time so that he would remember his financial rock bottom when he had literally spent all the money he'd ever made, he'd been working full time for a long time, he had no savings, he had nothing invested, he had $2.26. Alaikum salam. And then five years later, Feel free to guess if you'd like how much money he had five years later. But five years later, he had over one million dollars. So he talks about how he made that shift and he says that he does it, he did it using concepts from this book. 
and he's actually very responsive. So I want to give him a shout out. I, tw I tagged him on Twitter on this, and I don't know that he's going to watch this whole blah, blah, blah thing, but um, he does respond. Like, he'll like my tweets when I tag him or talk about his book. He likes my Instagram stories. He's he I asked him a question about something in the book, and he actually wrote me back and, and clarified and responded to me. So I thought that was really awesome. You don't find that a lot with authors, so definitely a good guy that wrote this one. Again, it's Grant Sabatier. His Twitter handle is in the title on Periscope. Hey, Takio. Takio, take it. hello, hi, good to see you again. I know you've been here before. Two, chapter two, time is more valuable than money. I think a lot of people know that. Money is infinite. Money is, compared to what you actually are ever going to need money for or want money for, money is virtually infinite and, and it can be created. Value can always be created and new inventions and new technologies are being created all the time that make money virtually infinite. Where time is the complete opposite of that where we don't never know when our time is gonna be up, but we know it's gonna be up. It's absolutely finite, and it could be much more finite than we'd care to even be aware of. Um, <laughs> thank you, Tia. <laughs> Tia likes my safety pen. So, <laughs> what is success? I make good money and still not happy enough. What is success? Um, I guess only you could define that for yourself. So we all want different things. That's a mistake that I've made. I try to help people into what I think they want. And I've learned that I need to listen better to what people want, what they want me to help them with if they want my help, and then help them with what they want rather than what I want for them. Because my vision of success is not the same as other people's. Some people's, some people I'm very in alignment with, but others not so much. And even the people I'm pretty in alignment with, it's not a perfect match. We, we want to get to levels of success in different ways, right? Thank you, I appreciate that, that was a very nice take. So only you can tell me what you envision as success. So just having money is not is not gonna make you happy, right? So freedom is gonna make it easier to ha pursue things that make you happy. So if you, but if you earn a lot of money, but then you work 100 hours a week and you're not you don't have no free time and you're exhausted and you can't maintain relationships and you don't see your own children and you can't travel like or if you want you if you can't do the things that you want you're not going to be happy regardless of how much money you make and you're not going to be able to take advantage of the freedom that you could use that money for if you are sacrificing all of your time because time is more valuable than money, which is why passive income is so powerful. Earning money when you're asleep, earning money when you're not working, that is one of the most powerful forms of income, if not the most powerful form of income. That comes from investments and it comes from businesses that you set up to generate passive income. So that is, that's like the ultimate goal. No, of course, take. Yeah, of course. No, that's fine. You don't have to respond. It's all good. Yeah, just feel free to absorb it. I talk fast and a lot. And if you're watching on YouTube and the replay, you might want to just like slow it down if, if I'm going too quick for you. So I think a lot of us know that time is more valuable than money. But he also talks in this chapter about how you can actually retire early and how you should retire early if you can, and you can, so therefore you should. <laughs> because why wait until you're 65, 70 years old to live the life that you wanna live? By then, you might have complications with your health. You may, your life may be very different. You may have lost your spouse, God forbid, you know, especially if your spouse is like, my, my boyfriend's 10 years older than me. You know, there's, there's more important things than money. There's more important things than working. And retirement doesn't have to mean that you stop working. So the word retirement, I don't love. Retirement means you're stopping something, to retire. So like when you go to bed, you can say you're retiring to bed. You're, you're stopping the day. You're stopping being awake. You're, you're changing into a, just rest and relaxation. When you become financially free, you don't have to stop working. And chances are, the sooner you become financially free, the less likely you're going to want to stop working or you're going to want to stop making money, especially if you've figured out a lot of ways to make passive income that don't take a ton of your time, then even more so will you be driven to continue um, with, with that because then you can have not just money, all the money that you'll ever need, but all the money your kids will ever need, grandkids. You can make major moves philanthropically, maybe even governmentally. So you can do things like lobbying or, um, you know, campaigns and you could do your own po political campaigns and you could also have you know you start not-for-profit organizations do ads about topics that are very important to you you could have hobby businesses like I would love to own a comedy a stand-up comedy club which I know is probably like the least profitable business that I could even think of but I just love stand-up comedy and I'd love to support comics and and create more things like that around the world so just imagine the freedom that you can have when you're financially free. You don't have to stop working. You're just, you don't, you no longer have to 
worry about money. You no longer have to worry about exchanging your time for money. You can just do what you want, when you want, how you want within some limits, right? And we'll talk about your number in just a second. Hey, Kristen, I'm good. How are you? Mwah. Good to see you. Happy Saturday night. Kyle says money don't last. I'm not sure what you mean by that. So that's the opposite of financial freedom. So if your money doesn't last, you don't have enough of it. You want your money to last well past your death. That's what we're talking about tonight. So, I mean, I don't know if you're saying like you can't take your money with you. That's for sure. You know, when you die, you don't take your money with you. In my opinion, you don't take anything with you. So, I mean, it's kind of like a moot point, but okay. Thank you, Jasmine. Very nice of you. Thank you, guys. Wow, you guys are being so sweet tonight. Chapter three, what is your number? So this is actually pretty easy to, to calculate. It's It takes a little bit of looking at your accounts. If you have one bank account that you spend all of your money out of, this is actually very easy for you. You can just go to your bank, look in the last 12 months, how much money did you spend on everything? Multiply that number by 25, and that is your number. That is the number that you need to have saved or invested, preferably invested, in order to retire or be financially free. In order to have financial freedom at the highest level, you will have accrued 25 years worth of expenses. That's that's the ultimate ratio here. And especially if you have that money invested, it's going to generate more money over time for you so that one, you're not getting beat up by inflation by having your money in a savings account. And when inflation goes up two to 3% on average each year, you actually are guaranteed to lose money by doing that. So saving is not the ideal. Some people want to save between like two and six months of, um, of expenses worth in the savings account so that it's really liquid and really easy to just access it and, and take care of emergencies as needed. That's fine. That's up to you how much money in cash you want to keep. Just realize that the longer you keep cash and the more cash you keep, the more of a risk it actually is because you're guaranteed to lose that money as the value of the dollar decreases gradually each year. The longer you keep it, it's great if you have $100,000 in your savings account, but you just lost... I don't want to say the wrong number. What is it? Two, th two to three thousand dollars every year. <laughs> Make sure I can do math. I've been doing math all day, and I'm like, no more math for me. Um, yeah, two to three thousand dollars a year that you would be losing just from inflation. So that money would quickly be worth virtually nothing over time. So just keep that in mind. Find as high of an interest rate on your savings account as you can, and then put the rest into some type of investment account. I was going to get to it later, but I'll just say now, the best investment, the, the, his top recommendation for investing and all my mentors who are investing successfully and are helping me figure this out since my family doesn't do this and doesn't know much about money and nothing in the public school system enabled me to learn anything about this, is to invest in a total market index fund. Now I get it, if you don't have extra money, you're not at that level yet. But for those of you listening in who do have money in your savings account, and maybe more than you think you need over the next two to six months, and you want to invest it somewhere, then a total market index fund is, fund is pretty much the way to go. It could be fun, but it's also fun. Hi, David. I just purchased five new books around business-related topics from Barnes and Noble. Oh, Barnes and Nobles, wow, that's an interesting choice of a vendor. But I'm really glad you bought those books. How much did you pay for them? Did you price compare on Amazon? Three months, and even eBay. eBay sometimes has better prices on Amazon. Three months expenses saved liquid. Use credit card for everything as long as you pay it off every month free money. Yes, absolutely. So if you can, if you can manage your credit card um, statements, like I pay if I, if I use my credit card, which actually isn't very often, I pay it off each month. I, use, I only use it for rewards. So my credit card's not the most amazing. It only has like 5% cash back on certain items and it's different months, different items that you can use it on. So I have to get a better one that has airline miles and all that kind of good stuff on it. And he talks about hacking, that type of stuff, not hacking, but he calls it hacking, right? Like a life hack um, for a lot of that kind of stuff. I'm not going to get into too many of those details, but that's a good example. So if you get a credit card that has a, an, an offer for new clients that gives you airline miles, it's usually like a big number of airline miles if you open this credit card. And if you do that, and then if you cancel it within a certain amount of time, you don't get hit with the next year's annual fee to maintain that card, but you get to keep the miles. So it's kind of like one of the many hacks that he describes in this book, which is a good reason that you should get the book yourself. Again, it's called Financial Freedom by Grant Sabatier. A proven path to all the money you'll ever need. That's what you meant, Kyle, that you can't take it with you. Okay. So uh, you take your number and you multiply by 25. And now this is a good way to be mindful of your expenses. So every time you spend money, so let's say you spend $100, okay? So you spend $100, 
Uh, I didn't need to put that in my calculator, but okay. <laughs> you multiply it by 25, you get $2,500. So that means in order to spend that $100, whatever it is you spent $100 on, if you want to be able to do that every year over the next 25 years, you're going to need $2,500 saved or invested. Remember, if you invest it, especially into a total market index fund, which has increased on average, I think, between 6 and 8% on average per year over the last 100 years, then you will, and even over the last 10 years, I mean, it's pretty consistently increases at that amount, then not only will you protect yourself against inflation, but you'll also be open to the a wonderful, amazing magic of compounding, which is that every year that it increases, you have more money there. So then when that same percentage, it increases again, you have that much more money and it just keeps growing on itself and it becomes um, exponentially increasing through the power of compounding. So get your money invested ASAP if you can. Otherwise, if you have credit card, I mean, I talked about this a lot with some of the other books that I've talked about, but definitely get yourself out of credit card debt like right now, right now, go work on that, get some money, take care of it as soon as possible because anything with a high interest rate is destroying your ability to become financially free. You can do it, you just have to get serious about it. I have had two separate friends, um, close friends of mine, who have come to me with debt concerns. They feel overwhelmed by the amount of credit card debt that they have. And I give them what I think is a relatively simple assignment, which is to tell me what amounts they have on which credit cards. All I need from them is, what card is it? They can give it a nickname. I don't care what bank it is or anything, but let's say credit card one has $5,000 on it and the interest rate is X. That's it. I need that for, for everything, all the loans that you have, all the debt you have out, so we can assess it and analyze it and figure out how long it will take. And, and also I would need to know basically like what money you have coming in, but I haven't even asked them for that part, right? To actually come up with a plan of action. And neither of them have gotten that to me. And I don't think that they will. They are uncomfortable with it. And a really important concept he talks about in this book, I love the way he talks about it, is building a relationship with money. If you don't spend any time around a person that you like, you're probably not going to build a relationship with them. If you are in a marriage, you may be a part of a marriage like this, I was, we lived together, we both worked from home, and we spent very little time together. That marriage ended. And I would say that it's really hard to have a pretty successful relationship with anyone or anything if you spend virtually no time around it or you don't spend a good amount of time around it building and working on the relationship. So you're not gonna have a great relationship with money unless you spend good amount of time around it and exposed to it and paying attention to it and give, you know, what do they say? Where your attention goes, grows. I, I don't think I said that, that quote right, but that's the concept. Whatever you focus on, that's the direction that you're gonna move. So if you're really connected with your money and you're giving it attention every single day, it's going to start transforming. It's gonna be slow, it's gonna be gradual, it's gonna be bit by bit, but you're gonna be aware of things that you're spending money on that you don't need. You're gonna be aware of new income opportunities. You're gonna be aware of investments um, that you could be making, and you're just gonna be learning more. And you're gonna be building that relationship because no one else is gonna do it for you. No one else cares more about your money than you do, except maybe how they can get it from you. So you need to take responsibility for your financial situation as much as possible. And teach your kids about it ASAP. Now, let me just catch up on comments real quick. Kill debt of any kind first, not just credit card, absolutely. Here's the thing, our club, if you have a student loan debt, if you have a car loan and it's like a couple percent versus a credit card of 25%, I absolutely, I mean, it's not just, not all debt is created equal, okay? There's bad debt and there's debt that's, for, for a purpose, right? Or especially if you have like, if you're leveraging debt for um, investment properties or something with real estate. So you don't just, you don't just eliminate all debt. I disagree with you there. I love you. As you know, we have a lot of mutual respect, I think. And that's why I think that we connect because we have opinions and ideas and we talk about these things and we learn from each other, hopefully. And you can let me know what you think about that. Um, definitely credit card debt is usually the worst debt people have. If you have like gambling debt, it's probably very similar. If you've been borrowing money from a casino, probably really high interest rate. A lot of anything that has a high interest rate, you want to pay down your loan with the highest interest rate first. The lowest interest rate is last. You're going to waste the least amount of money that way. And you're going to potentially be able to leverage the debt that you do have. Maybe it's your car loan. Your car can get you to and from where you need to go to generate money and income and, and build relationships. And it could be have some value to you. And it's usually a pretty low percentage that you have on that loan comparatively to a credit card, usually by like, you know, 20%. Absolutely, mortgage debt is typically in range of 4 to 5%, nothing compared to credit card or student loan. Student loan debt is usually right in that same range, is not is it not? 
<laughs> You're glad to see the mic being used for something other than ASMR. <laughs> Hi, Tyla. Sorry, I'm like really hyped up about all this. How do they give you money so you can grow it? They, these people support just so that I can basically live off of this money. I mean, I'm making just about enough to live off of at this point, just with like rent, expenses, groceries. So I don't think these people are like trying to help me grow my money. Maybe they are, maybe they'd like to see that, but there'd be, there need to be a lot more names and higher dollar amounts up here for that to be the reality. I am pretty good at saving my money, so I do keep it. I mean, right now I'm okay. I can keep this channel going. But last year we were really thriving and I should have done a lot more with that money. I didn't know as much about money at the time. But yeah, they don't give me money just so that I can grow. It's not like an investment, right? These are just supporters of the channel that make this channel possible. These people said, hey, this is worth at least five, 10, 15, 20 dollars of my money because it's either potentially going to make me more money, it's helping me with my health goals, my relationship goals. I get value from the community, from the connection, from not feeling alone and lonely. We have people in our audience who don't like to leave their homes. They can connect with people here in the chat, people with depression, people with PTSD, people with anxiety. And a lot of people value this channel for a lot of different reasons, and I so appreciate them for supporting. But keep in mind, people in those types of situations don't always have great financial situations, can't always support the channel at the level they would like to and how much they actually value it. So we have some of the higher level people, like the $100, the $300, the $240, that can help to grow this even more. We Last year, pretty much the entire year, we always had at least one person that was over $1,000 in the last 30 days. So it's taken a major shift, a major shift. And I hope that I'm still creating value. I don't know if people just think, oh, well, you know, you do well, so I don't need to help you. Other people will help you or what. But um, yeah, I'm not feeling super secure with, with the future of the channel at this point, just to be clear. Slow down, please. <laughs> Rose, I have... A little less than 30 minutes left we're about halfway through so I can't really slow down but if you watch this on YouTube on the replay you can actually physically slow this down um, you can, by either pausing it but also on there's a playback speed option on YouTube where I am live right now too hey Nuckin how are you you sound overly prepared is there such thing as being overly prepared financial freedom is by Grant Sabatier we're live on uh, YouTube right now too and the name the title and the author are both in the YouTube title Who's that? Is that Vapool? Vapool! Thank you! Oh, sorry, sorry. I forget when I'm using this microphone. Sometimes I can't yell. Uh, thank you so much for the super hearts. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I need to add this book you are mentioning to my library. I agree. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it five stars, and it was on my last email that went out last week of um, book reviews and emails. My house is 4% fixed for 30 years. You got it, Alex. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you can figure out your number. Now, let me say that that hierarchy here that I wanted to share with you guys, which is what he calls the seven levels of financial freedom. Number one is clarity. When you figure out where you are and where you want to go. So this is all about that relationship with money, looking at your expenses, looking at your savings, looking at your investing, looking at your cash flow and figuring out where you are right now. Then and, and your net worth, looking at your assets, your home, your car, your laptop. I have my laptop on my, <laughs> my net worth sheet because he pretty much says anything that you could sell right now for more than $100, you can add to your net worth, you know, within reason. It's up to you what you want to put on there, really. But anything that you consider, this is what you're actually worth. If you were to sell off everything that you have, this is what you could get for it today. And you check in with that just about every single day and figure out where, where you're at. Keep an eye on everything and figure out, you know, you might have some investments that all of a sudden are way, way, way over what they should be and you can hold on to them or you can sell them, but you wouldn't even know that happened if you weren't aware of what was going on with your situation. So that's one is clarity. Number two is self-sufficiency. So what's interesting here is that he doesn't really have a level for people who aren't already self-sufficient. And I know there's a lot of you out there probably watching this who aren't at that level yet. Maybe you're a single parent, maybe you're disabled. You know, I get it. I, I guess I don't get it. I wasn't a single parent and I'm not disabled, so I don't want to say I get it and like undermine your situation that I actually don't fully understand. But I know that you're out there and I felt like he didn't really address that crowd as much as possibly could have helped, but 
it is what it is. Thank you so much, David, for the $10 sponsorship. Mwah, love you. Thank you so much. Our friend out in California just went to the website, nextjuice.com slash support, and sent 10 bucks. <sighs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I made like $5 last night in, what was it, an hour and a half or something? And I was like, ah, what am I going to do? Okay, so I appreciate it. I appreciate the 10 bucks. I will... I will use it wisely. I will probably not use it. I will, I will do. I will try to store it wisely at the same time. I do have to pay my bills, but you know, I'll do what I can with it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So self-sufficiency is when you earn enough money to cover your expenses. So this is what living paycheck to paycheck is, virtually. This is when you earn just enough money that you can get yourself through the week or the two weeks between paychecks, and then that's it then you need another paycheck and then you can get through to the next paycheck and then that's it and you get to the, that's self-sufficiency and that's that's what he calls level two so level one he calls clarity it's not really a level it's more of an action so you might not be there yet so your goal may be to get to level two but all of our goal needs to make sure that we have level one involved we have to have clarity because some of you might be working a job where you earn a lot of money and you like that guy said like i, I make forty thousand dollars a month i don't know what to do with it and hey andy how are you and he doesn't even if he's at level four or five he doesn't know he doesn't necessarily have clarity so level one to me you know i feel like this could be improved a little bit sorry again grant i love your book <laughs> but uh we all have to have clarity, okay? And then level two is self-sufficiency. So that's step one. You wanna get yourself to paycheck to paycheck. You don't wanna have your debt. You wanna get the bad debt gone and you wanna be earning enough to cover your expenses. Actually, debt being gone is actually not even part of that. So just where you're earning enough, you have enough money coming in to cover what you're putting out and you're not digging yourself deeper into debt. Number three is breathing room. This is when you escape from living paycheck to paycheck. This is where you're making a little bit more, more money than you need to survive. Now, word to the wise, don't go spending it. Just because you have a little extra money, don't go to the casino, don't go out for drinks, don't buy yourself some fancy new thing with that extra money because then you put yourself right back at living paycheck to paycheck. And that's, you don't want to move backwards. We want, okay, I don't want you to move backwards. Maybe you want to move backwards, that's fine, but use your brain okay you're too smart for that if you're here right now on a saturday night watching this you are way too smart to be spending all your extra money on things that you do not need because what you do when you every time you spend money you steal from your future and you steal from yourself even the past self who had to work their butt off to get that money so be smart with it put it to good use make it as powerful as possible use it very wisely i'm not saying never spend money on anything but just be very aware when you're spending that money what it really means and, and how much money you would need to have to justify that expense over the next 25 plus years to, between you and retirement or financial freedom. This is what I think most people stumble on. I don't know if it's most people, like it's so hard. We, we can only see our own perspective, right? I don't struggle with that. I don't know if it's because of the experience I had when I was younger seeing my mom struggle with money. I was raised by a single mother. She struggled with bills and money a lot. I still have some of that scarcity mindset. Um, when it comes to money myself, I still witness myself, even though I'm comfortable, I'm not in debt. I still like, anytime my cash flow goes down even a bit, I'm like, I can feel that anxiety that she had, like it's in me somewhere. I certainly don't spend it. I mean, me and Ed, so my boyfriend Ed, he's the opposite of the spectrum. No, he's not, he doesn't just like bury himself in debt, but he doesn't, he, he's not super aware of where his money is going. Like he'll just spend it. He doesn't think anything of it. Like he wants the best thing. He wants the top of the line. He's just going to spend it. He doesn't think like we're going to go out to eat. He's going to buy everything. Like he doesn't, it's a whole different situation. I'm like, we shouldn't, no, we shouldn't do that. No, we, you, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, 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 shouldn't. Like I'm shooting all over him, right? Because I am not a big spender. I'm much more of a saver. I love seeing money in my savings account and going, okay, <sighs> takes a little bit of that anxiety away. Thanks, Brad, for the super hearts. How are you tonight? Happy Saturday. I did. Yeah, David, you must have jumped out of the broadcast. I already said thank you to you so much. I shouted you out from California. I said thanks for the $10. I was talking about how last night I made like $5, and I was really happy to see $10 come in. Just doubled the money we made from yesterday. So <laughs> thank you, David. Thank you. You must have popped out because your bubble was here, and while I was talking, it, it went away. So I'm not sure what happened there. But I promise that I did say thank you, and you can watch the replay if, if you missed it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should make sure that you guys are in here before I do that. Um, sorry, David. <laughs> I did. I did. I swear. There he is, guys. D-Dunn, 1966. We're here because of him, so all hail. 
opposite spectrum too. What's wrong with my 10 year old jeans? Oh yeah, for sure. So like I said, <laughs> I'm holding this together right now with a safety pin because it's ripped very badly. It's ripped from here to here and there's a good chance my boob's just gonna fall out of it if I didn't have this, <laughs> this um, safety pin. I don't really sew things. I don't know, I'm not a super domesticated person. So I'm like, okay, safety pin is good, but you know, I would rather sew it than like get rid of it and get something else, you know, and this is kind of new. So I'm like, I, you know, I want this. I can't remember if this is one of the ones Ed bought for me. Ed bought a lot of clothes for me this year um, I, because I wouldn't buy them for myself. And then, and we do that. So when we go shopping, I'm like, oh my God, this is so cute. And then I go, $25, blah, blah, And I like walk away from it. This is at Target, right? It's not like high end stuff. And he's like, put it in the car. Like, let me get it for you. Like, it looks good on you. Let me just get it. And it's like this weird dynamic where I'm like, why? Like, why do you want to just spend your money? It's just, he's like, you know, I work hard. I'm going to do what I want with it. Like, different mindsets, okay? Um, but I did buy, I went to the outlets, what, a few months back when I first, like, I don't remember, sometime over the summer, and I did buy myself a couple outfits. I can't remember. I don't think this, I think this was from Target. I think Ed got me this one. But anyway, with $10, you can get a few more safety pins. I think it's actually my only safety pin. I knew right where it was, too. I'm like, it's in my backpack in the little pocket. Yeah. Me and you are club. Probably about the same. 87% of your clothes are from Target. Yeah. Oh, easily. Um, most of my clothes are actually from a place called Wet Seal, which has, like, $5 shirts, on, and I buy them online, but I don't anymore. I haven't shopped. I haven't shopped except the outlet thing in a really long time. Um, Ed has shopped for me a couple of times. Unexpectedly, we go into Target for something else. I see a cute shirt, and then all of a sudden he buys me like five things, which I very much appreciate because it's nice to have new things, but I would never do that myself. Your daughter shops at Goodwill and adds to the garment to make them cute. I like that, Rose. That's awesome. I love that. Costco is also on point. We don't have a Costco here. I've never been inside of a Costco before. Um, yeah, so enough about me. Let's Let's continue with the levels. So... If you have a little extra money above living paycheck to paycheck, don't spend it. There's a big tip for you. Don't spend it. Hold it. Just put it in your savings account. Just watch it and be like, oh my God, I have an extra $100. Woo! -hoo! And just let that keep growing and you'll get really excited about it. Um, hello, Yulrick. I do have a, a boyfriend, so you cannot possess me, but I'm glad that we are friends. Hello. Number four, stability. When you have six months of living expenses saved or invested, and bad debt like credit card debt repaid. So level four is when you've completely gotten yourself out of debt and you have six months of expenses in your savings or investing accounts. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to rain on your parade. I just wanted to make sure we set clear boundaries here in our, in our blossoming friendship. So and keep, keep in mind, like, so you might want to type in the chat, what level are you trying to get to? Or what you can say, I'm at level this level and I'm trying to get to this level. I would focus on getting to the next level up before thinking, you know, financial freedom for everyone because there's some steps between that. And you want to celebrate the, the progress. It's not all about the end goal. I posted a video about this on my Instagram page recently. Same username over there, Next Juice, N E X Juice, J U I C E. And um, it's right on my feed. And I was talking about like how with goals, like are you successful when you lose the amount of weight that you want to lose? Are you successful when you go to the gym? Are you successful when you drink water instead of soda? Like I feel like that you're successful. Every decision, you can make successful decisions and that is success as well. You cannot possess me. Yeah, that is what I said. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Hey, J-Rod. Is all that? Yeah, over the last 30 days, yeah. But this is also my full-time job, so... If you look at this, this is about, I think, about $1,500 for 30 days. Not including super hearts, but just, I, I would really love to see this, num this number plus super hearts at about $5,000 per month. That would be $60,000 a year. I think that's about what I would get just working like a 40 hour a week job somewhere. So I feel like that's like the minimum I have to make on here to justify being here <laughs> instead of being there. So I appreciate everyone who allows us to be here together because I think this co this conversation, this discussion, this information is so important and there's not a lot of people out there putting it out there, especially not on Periscope, and it could change lives. You know, it's changing my life. That's 100% for sure. <laughs> posse? Did I say posse? Anyway. <laughs> Number 5 is flexibility when you have at least 2 years of living expenses invested. Level six, I don't have enough fingers for that one. Financial independence, when you can live off the income generated by your investments 
forever. So work becomes optional. For me, my, my let me go back one, I'm, my goal is to get to level five. Right now, I have no credit card debt. I'm all completely, I never had credit card debt, but I have all my student loan, everything, debt all paid off. Old tax debt from when I didn't know how to run my own business. Everything, all that's paid off. And um, I have six months, yeah, I have at least six months saved, not invested. So I'm working on trying to figure out how to shift that from saved to invested. So I'm, I feel okay with that, but I am also taking classes right now that I'm paying for out of pocket and it's 6,000, it's going to be $12,000 for my associate's degree. So that six month cushion is like getting chipped away at every time I pay for more classes and I'm like, ah, so I want to get to that two year level where I'm at with what you call flexibility, what he calls flexibility at, at level five. And then level seven, the highest level that he puts on here is abundant wealth when you have more money than you'll ever need. I'd like to have five years savings and just painting daily. Okay, so Francis, um, savings or investing? What do you mean by savings? Because I, I've already talked about this, but you might not have been here. You're at level six, J-Rat, so you wanna be to level seven. You're financially independent. You can live off the income generated by your investments forever and work becomes optional. And you've never even sent this channel $5. You don't even think it's worth $5, J-Rod? My heart. J-Rod, what? Anyway, it's fine. You know, if, if, it, if what I'm doing isn't valuable, then I'll go work for someone and create value for them. I'm not above that. I will do whatever it takes to reach my goal of getting to level five. <laughs> um, so, sure, Francis, sorry, that's why I said Shirley. Just in case you just got here, anyone who just got here, don't put all your money, if you have five years of savings, do not put it in a savings account because you will lose two to 3% of it on average per year. Um, whoa, I'm, I'm immediately sweating. Can I shout that out, is that anonymous? What is that? Um, five years of salary invested, okay, invested, awesome, yes. Yeah. So if you have it in your savings account, you're gonna lose money to inflation, so put it into a total index, total market index fund. I have the VTI, which is the Vanguard Total Market Index Fund, and that's where you're buying basically the whole market, a little bit of all the companies in the whole market. It's like one of the lowest risk stocks that it's pretty much the lowest risk risk stock that you can invest in. Um, the lowest, lowest, lowest risk item that you can invest in is a bond, which is basically a guaranteed amount of percentage that you're, you're basically loaning money to the government and they're going to give you a fixed amount uh, back on that, which I think is somewhere between like three and five, I think it's like 3%, I don't even think it's 5%. So if you're really close to like retirement age, financial freedom age, not financial, sorry, retirement age, like if you're a little bit older, you might not want to invest in the stock market because it could fluctuate a lot over the next five, 10 years. But if you're like me and you're, you, you have a good 20 years before that potential comes, for me it's 30 years, then you can you can take a little bit more risk and have a lot more invested in stocks. So he talks about the difference if you want to have like 60% in stocks, 40% in bonds, 80% in stocks, 20% in bonds, vice versa if you're a little bit older or, or quite a bit older. Or, it, you know, for him, he says, I think he says he has 100% in stocks and a lot of the people that follow him do. Um, that's my intention. I'm 29. I don't really need to invest in bonds right now. <laughs> maybe as I get older, maybe in like my 50s, I'll, I'll find more value in bonds. But I have a pretty good feeling I won't. Um, so the next, this it's the name of this channel. So next is short for nexus, which is an English word that means a connected group. And then juice is like that juicy, special, positive quality and energy that we have on this channel. Now, if you please excuse this interruption, we interrupt this regularly scheduled programming to go look at my PayPal account because what the heck just happened? Actually, I don't need to go to my PayPal. Let me just go to my email. Hi, Sonam. Oh, that's why I was going to call you Shirley, because your last name's Shirley. I'm like, why was I just going to call you Shirley? Okay, Francis Shirley. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Here's my rent. I love that, David. Keep up the good work. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know if I can say who that is. I think I can. I think I'm going to say. I'm going to say, because it doesn't say anonymous, and if you hate me, I will hide this. I don't want to hide this broadcast. I'm not hiding this broadcast. I'm hate I hate you. Hi, 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 hi. There he is. I made sure that he was in the room, right? I made that mistake with David a minute ago. Our club 1981 just supported this channel, not at $10, not at $20, but at $100. That is the epitome of a sigh of relief. Thank you, R, for hearing 
the anxiety in my life right now and taking the edge off a little bit and reminding me there are people out there that think this is valuable and want to support this kind of stuff because I know you know a lot of this already and you're already at probably level five, six, maybe even seven. And it's like you don't necessarily need this, right? It's not like you are directly benefiting. Like it's a lot of re recapping what you already know, but you're helping other people who can't afford to support it to keep it existing. So um what that is just rude i won't give you nothing okay well i'm gonna give you an english lesson it's i won't give you anything that's the proper grammatical use and that's gonna help you a lot to get a job so that you can earn more money so you can support me to say thank you for the english lesson that i gave you for free okay let me just go over that one more time clarity that's level one but i say that it's Per, it permeates all of the levels. Thank you so much, Arco. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Level two is self-sufficiency. That's living paycheck to paycheck. Level three is breathing room. When you escape living paycheck to paycheck and you have a little extra money that you make and you don't spend it. You hear me? Don't spend it. Just keep living like you were when you were paycheck to paycheck. Put that money in the little savings account. Put it under your mattress. I don't care. Just don't spend it. Put it, put it somewhere where you're not going to touch it, okay? Like, give it to give it to me. No, not give it to me like that. Like, not me. Like, a friend you have. Like, somebody who's just going to... Somewhere where you can't touch it, okay? I've said that to friends before. I'm like, do you want me to just, like, hold your money somewhere in, like, a special account and, like, not let you touch it because you have a problem? <laughs> and no one has ever taken me up on that offer, so it is what it is. Put it somewhere where it's hard to access, all right? Don't spend it, please, for your own good. I love you, and I don't want you to be living paycheck to paycheck the rest of your life and working at Walmart at age 75, all right? Just saying. For how long? Until you have level four, which is stability, six months of living expenses saved, and all of your, what is this? Yeah, all of your bad debt, like credit card debt, anything with a high interest rate on it, repaid. So you're out of debt and you have six months of money saved or invested. That's when you can stop necessarily putting it into, excuse me, a savings account and, and look into investing options. Now you're stable. Now, you know, maybe you can spend a little bit of it on a little bit of something. You know, I, I do believe in rewarding yourself for things, but every, I said this earlier, but I know some of you are just coming in. Every time we spend money, we're stealing from our future. Okay. So it's money that you're not going to have. And it's not going to grow into anything else. You're going to have to go back and work and earn it all over again. So you're also stealing from your labor and your energy that you put into creating that money. So it better be worth it. Of course, I encourage you to spend money on things that are worth it, that are important. I went to Egypt and it was an amazing experience. I made some of my, or not made, I had already been pretty much best friends with them, but I met some of them in person that I have never met before. I met, I met a lot of people through Periscope. So I met Sonam, Top Shelf Pineapple in Egypt. That's the first place we met. She's from England. I'm from America. We met in Egypt. Our hotel room with a view of the pyramids. Let me repeat that. A view of the pure, the Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt was $40 a night. I think it was $38 a night. With taxes, maybe it was $45 a night. But are you effing kidding me right now? That was worth it. That is a worthy expense in my opinion. I really wanted to go. I couldn't imagine having a hotel room with a view of the pyramids. And then for $40 a night was like... Yeah, and I was going live from there too. So like we were doing like sunrise and sunset with the pyramids. It was just so awesome. It was so cool. It was so it was such an experience of my life. Like that was it was forty dollars a night. Okay, the most expensive part of that trip was the flights, which I think was like a thousand dollars or something like that. I mean, the whole trip was less than two thousand dollars, and we were there for like five days. To me, that was worth it. Okay, like. It may or may not be worth it to you. You may be more of a homebody. You don't want to travel, but it's affordable. It's cheap, right? I wasn't spending $1,000 a night. If I had gone to Egypt and they had had, like, American prices, which would have probably costed, like, a good, like, 200 plus for, like, a crappy view of the pyramid, I would have gotten a room that didn't have a view of the pyramid. Like, I probably still would have gone, but I, I really do. Anytime I travel, I try not to spend more than, at most, like, $100 it, it's up more now than it used to be like 100 to 150 dollars a night on hotel rooms i've tried the airbnb thing i've had pretty bad experiences like roaches howling dogs in the middle of the night like things that um uh, more there's more but this isn't about airbnb and, and trashing them but 
I really value hotel services, <laughs> like knowing that I'm gonna have clean towels and no dogs like in my space, licking my face, like hair everywhere and I'm trying to, you know what I mean? Like I like to have some situation. So I'm willing to pay more than other people might pay for a situation that is predictable and consistent and I know that it's gonna be okay. So a certain kind of hotel room, I'll pay for that. I love traveling, I love going to the beach. You know, I'll pay to park my car at the beach if it's like 10, 20 bucks, I'll pay for that. So that's my values, you're gonna have different values. Maybe it's really important for you to have a really nice watch and you're willing to spend money on that, that's fine. Like, if it's really important to you and you really value it and it brings you a lot of joy, when you feel joy, what happens is your brain releases dopamine, which is a really powerful neurotransmitter into your brain, and it's directly correlated to motivation and drive. And if you're feeling driven and motivated, you're gonna go out and you're gonna earn more money because you're gonna get that feeling of, okay, I like this and I want more. So that's a good thing. You know, it's a positive feedback cycle. You just don't wanna waste money, like going out and spending a bunch of money on alcohol and like partying and then feeling like crap the next day, not really feeling motivated probably not having a whole lot of dopamine maybe making a bad decision maybe cheating and ruining your relationship I mean who knows you know there are things that are not worth it <laughs> there's no amount of money that could be worth those types of things what was the conversion it was 40 it was 40 American dollars that's what I'm saying yeah awesome and no hidden cameras yes another good point another great point hi Nate how are you good to see you South Africa right uh, okay, I was gonna do this all at once and I got kind of distracted with the comments. So, uh, four was stability, that's six months. Then five is flexibility, which is at least two years of living expenses invested. Level six is financial independence, where you generate enough money to live off of from just your investments and you no longer have to work. And then seven is abundant wealth, when you have more money than you will ever need. Hi, yeah, it has. You won't have any husband, who won't? You mean if you go out and spend all your money on drinks every night? <laughs> wait, wait, let's let her, let's let her, let's see what she was going to say. Because I already have a boyfriend, so if she's saying I'm never going to have a husband, I'm just going to have to say I've already had a husband. <laughs> and uh, I could see my current boyfriend becoming my husband as well. I'd love to be at seven. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like six is perfectly fine for me because I don't actually have children, so my boyfriend does have children. I'm trying to teach them about money and the value of money. I think level six leads towards level seven like i'm happy to have enough money to live off of for the rest of my life abundant wealth having more money than i need to me is a bit a bur of a burden <laughs> you know like i would be happy at six seven is more work it, it symbolizes like more pressure i read the autobiography of da david carnegie am i saying that right david carnegie andrew andrew carnegie who's da dale i'm thinking dale carnegie the guy who wrote how to win friends and influence people <laughs> Andrew Carnegie, the huge, the railroad mogul of the Industrial Revolution era, he, I love him, I wish I knew him, I want to be friends with him, it's fine, it's fine, whatever, but he talks in his autobiography about how the more money he had, like, the more he had to do with it, right, so, and everyone wanted a piece of him and a piece of it and all their different foundations and organizations. He, he founded many different libraries, public libraries, all around the world, in Scotland, where he was from originally, in New York City, where he lived a lot, I think, um, Pitt, Pittsburgh, was it Pittsburgh, like, where he had a lot of, um, where most of his success came from, I believe, Pittsburgh, so that's really cool, and I would love the power to do that, but at the same time, it is, like, a burden, and as he gets older, and then as he was getting older, he said, like, then it became this thing where, like, what's he going to do with all this money, like, he wanted to use it up as much as possible while he was alive, rather than, like, leave it to somebody, you know, who may or may not use it and be as wise with it as he was, so he made sure that he had a good network of people that he trusted as well, especially younger people, which, I learned a lot from that book. I love that guy. You know, we can only dream. Most of us will only ever dream of having that type of wealth and, and those types of problems. I call those positive problems. When you have too much money and you, you're spending a lot of your time trying to figure out what you're going to do with all your money, <laughs> it's a pretty good problem to have. But it is a problem nonetheless, and it's definitely somewhat of a stressor. So for me, if I had enough money to just live off of the rest of my life and not people constantly trying to take all my money from me, I think that would be a, a fine place for me to be. Hey, Deb. I think I'm at level two and a half. Okay, so you're living paycheck to paycheck right now, but you're on your way towards being free from paycheck to paycheck. Is that what you mean, Rose? That's good. Thanks for sharing that. Dale Andrew's second cousin tried to make 
pedal powered trains. Wait, is that real? Because Dale Carnegie is the guy who wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People also. I think I'm ready to become a sponsor. I just go to that website, right, Taylor? I think I'm ready. Um, yes, Tim, are you serious right now? I don't know why I thought you were our club for a second. I'm like, you just did. Are you serious? Oh my God, we've been friends for so long. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh my God. I love Seven because I could help so many others. Yes. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's a it's like a very you're on the on the blade, right? Because it's also when you so we all think that we're these great people and we're gonna take all our money and we're gonna save all the starving children and we're gonna end sex trafficking. We're gonna like do these great things and then like we get the money and we become people that we didn't think we would become. And we see all these people in high powers of uh, high levels of power and we say oh they're so corrupt they're such crappy people they got they must have gotten there through corruption and, and being crappy uh oh okay my, my this broadcast is supposed to be over now but i'm gonna keep it going for a little while i gotta plug my laptop in because it's about to die um but i read 30 i read 30 books in 30 days um in the the end of 2016 i believe or was it 2017 i forget but it was in like towards the end of the year, in either 2016 or 2017, a few years back. Where the heck is my plug? <laughs> oh, here it is. And what I learned from all, I read a lot of different types of books. So I read like the books that I like to read, business, psychology, finance, those types of things, personal development. Um, and then I also read a few fiction books. I read books from all over the, the spectrum. Um, I read, hi, hi, um, Asif, I almost called you Atlas because I was just going to say Atlas Shrugged, but I didn't read Atlas Shrugged. I read Fountainhead during that time by Ayn Rand, one of my favorite authors of all time, probably my favorite author of all time. Wish that she was alive. I'd love to be friends with her too. I don't know if we'd get along, but anyway. Um, and during that time, reading all these different kinds of books, 30 books in 30 days, one book a day, I realized I had my main takeaway from the collection of those books, which were all so different, was that power corrupts. That when people get a lot of money, when they get a lot of power and control over others, they don't always make the right decision and the best decision, morally ethical decision, every single time. They might do mostly the right thing, but if they just do like one kind of shady thing, it ruins their reputation and the way people think of them. People say, oh, I would never do that. Well, they didn't think they would do that either. Like, And I'll just kind of come out about this. I've, I've shared it on here before. Some of you may or may not know. I actually cheated on my ex. And up until the moment that I did that, of course, I said I would never do that. I personally believed that I would never do that. Until the very moment that it happened, I was 100% certain that it would never happen. So we don't always, we're not these perfect people that we always think. And having a crap, like if we were to just win the lottery right now, most of us, that would be such a bad thing that would happen to us. So that's kind of my point with this whole like abundant wealth. Like it seems nice because we think we're these awesome people, but it's really easy to be a good person when you don't have like a whole lot of power and money to be a really crappy person. Because if you're a crappy person and you're broke, like you just go to jail. I mean, it's not like <laughs> you don't, pay off anybody just get consequences when you're above the consequences temptation becomes much more powerful than you may think <laughs> thanks thanks tim i want to do something that no one has ever done though maybe 10 billion super hearts i guess 20 to 30k for three to four months of travels i know i would love to so how are you are you gonna like do a video about that or write some kind of blog or post a book or something like what are you going to do I'd love to hear about all that travel because it was cool you were kind of like popping in here and there and telling me where you were and it was so awesome thank you thank you Tim you're amazing well 10 billion superpowers would be insane that would uh that would cost let's see that would be just about I mean you'd spend like what is three quarters of that you'd be spending like six billion dollars on that so that's probably in that billion six million dollars on that so probably not an option um, I appreciate the sentiment <laughs> um, for me I think a record would be three million super hearts I believe 
I don't know if we ever hit three million. I know we definitely have done one million and two million. We did two million like once. I've seen other people get three million, but I don't think I've ever actually hit three million myself. But anyway. It's interest and it's an interesting thing how people handle wealth. Huge variation in my experience at least. Know that that was attempt at dumb joke. Wait, what? Wait, what was? <laughs> I'm like so far behind on comments. Okay, okay. There are poor, crappy people too. For sure. For sure. I'm writing, we're all crappy though. That's, that's more my message is like, they're not different than us. Like we are all crappy. We are all, if you had been, um, you know, not all, not everybody, but the chances of you doing things that you see other people doing that you think, oh, I'd never do that. Well, if you were raped as a child, I mean, if you were repeatedly sexually and physically abused and verbally, emotionally abused, lost both your parents, were in foster care, was, were introduced to heroin, you know, in your teenage years, whatever it is, like, you could have been in that same situation. The best way to look at people who are making what you view to be poor decisions in their life is to feel pity and to feel grateful and thankful that you don't have to be in that really horrible situation. Because most people who become like addicts are trying to escape a really painful reality. They're not just like dumb idiots who are like, oh yeah, like I'm very well educated and, and I have tons of opportunity and money and love in my life and I think I'm just going to like go start using crack. I mean, there's probably some instances of that, but the vast majority of people who become addicts to hard drugs like that uh, are people who had a really, really hard life. I'm writing a book, posting a blog, a meeting. Master P, what? You're opening up three breweries, what the heck? Hi, hi, Charlene, hi, hi, hi. I didn't get to see your response back, but hopefully that, hopefully my message landed well with you from earlier. Yeah, Tim, I want to say, that's what I was actually thinking. I feel like you have been here since, like, I mean, I've been going live every single day for over two and a half years. I feel like you've been here. I remember TH come South Carolina, like, saying that so many times. Empathy, yes. Some that will surprise you, and usually the bigger ones are the ones not advertising. Oh, yeah, and they're smart. That's, that's something that I totally, like, people will say, oh, do you want to be famous? I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to be famous at all. Being famous would be so annoying. <laughs> There's no privacy in that at all. You know, I live stream a lot of my life, but I'm nowhere near being famous. I would certainly not want to be, like, walking down the street in anything I do. People are, like, taking pictures and, like, reporting and spinning it, you know? As soon as, um, and, and the same thing, people will hit you up for money a lot if you flaunt it around and, and wave it around at the, at the bar, you know. As soon as my new credit card on file. <laughs> All right, thanks, Tim. How do you get empathy back? I've lost it. What do you think caused you to lose it, bro? If you had it once, I would say you could probably have it again. I'm not a doctor, but do you have, a, did you a, experience a brain injury? I would be so corrupt, cigars and scotch, like Monty Burns, well, cigars and scotch are like, I mean, it could be way worse than cigars and scotch. Thank you, Tim. I love your spirit as well, and I love your appreciation. So those are the seven levels of financial freedom in this book. That was a good discussion about them as well. Um, what is your number? So you take your yearly expenses, multiply it by 25. That is your number that you that you're having, you have a goal that is to be saved or invested in order for you to be financially free. So thank you, Tim. Um, so does someone want to just pipe in an example of what you think your monthly expense, or sorry, your yearly expenses are roughly? So over the past year, how much money do you think you spent in that year? And hopefully you know the answer to that. Um, my, I've been trying to figure this number out for myself. It's actually really challenging because I closed multiple bank accounts earlier this year. And I also ended a marriage, moved to Florida, moved to New Jersey, now living in a very different living situation. For seven years when I was with my ex, I didn't pay any rent or I don't think I paid it really any bills. I paid like minimal like Wi-Fi. Um, J-Rod, thank you for the super hearts. I appreciate that. 15,000. That is so low. I love that. Okay, so Rose's um, living expenses are very low. She spends $15,000 a year. Now, and thank you for sharing that, Rose. I appreciate that. Yeah, so it's it, it's hard. Like, even with the bank accounts, like, I can't actually go into those bank accounts and really see, like, what I spent, and everything was different. So really, like, from a year from when I moved here is going to be the best number for me to use. So I can use rough estimates, but it's really, 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 really super rough. So I'm kind of just going to give it a few more months because I, I moved here in December. So 
in a couple months, I'll, I'll have a better number, to, and I can use my own number as an example. So if we just mul you just take that number, multiply it by 25, you end up with $375,000. If Rose can get $375,000 saved or invested without increasing her expenses, without increasing how much she spends per year, then she is now financially free. She And, and you also want to have that invested, obviously, right? Because you're only going to spend, so 15000 divided by 12, so you're spending about 1250 a month. I don't know how that's even possible. That's like very, very impressive. Um, then you would want to have about 7500 of that in a savings account, and the rest you would want to have invested. So again, total market index funds. You're going to outperform 90% of people who independently invest. People who try to pick the companies they think are going to do best, 90% of them fail to outperform the general market. So just invest in the good old ETF, total market index funds. And in this book, he suggests having up to 5% of your portfolio invested in independent stocks if you want to get into that. So if you think, oh, this company is like way on sale. I, I do a lot of valuation techniques on here that I learned from Phil and Danielle Town. They wrote the book Invested and Rule Number One Investing. And I, I use their margin of safety pricing valuation method. And we just look at like the past 10 years of data for the companies. We come up with a price that we think would be a like fire sale price for the company. And if that company were to go down to that price and it still had the, the moats, like it has good management, it has um, a good meaning to us, we can understand it's within our circle of competence. I meant to end this broadcast about 10 minutes ago. So let me stop repeating a lot of stuff I've talked about in previous videos, but um, and in that case, then you might want to buy that company. But he suggests that you keep that to 5% or less of your total portfolio. And remember, as the numbers go up, right? So like it's 5% of your portfolio and then it may go up or may go down, right? So like as things, as the market or the stocks you're invested in go up or down, it changes the percentage of your portfolio that you, that it is, right? So if it does end up going up a lot, great you are basically just stuck now. You can't really like buy new ones according to his strategy. I don't know if I agree with it or not, but I'm not an experienced investor, so you should probably just listen to him. Love, love, I don't think you heard me last night, but I think you had already left night last night. It was two days ago, right? Um, when that video or the call-in stream that you called in on this entire time, and you've been on my broadcast for at least a few months, I think. I thought your username was Lil, like, like a person named Lil, loves car. And then, yes, two days ago, I took a bathroom break. While I was peeing, I was thinking about you. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> and then I came out and I was like, you guys, I was just peeing. I was thinking about Lil, or no, Love. That's what you want to call it, Love. And I realized that his username is Lil Love Scar. And this whole time, I didn't even know his username. It was ridiculous. So I had that moment, and I thought you should know about it because you weren't here when I had the realization. Um, what does that mean, by the way? Because some people thought that was a sexual, sexual name. I didn't. I did not have that thought at first. Then I was thinking, okay, maybe that is what it means. But I was also wondering if it's like, does it mean like heartbreak? What does it mean? Bulls make money. Hogs get slaughtered. Oh, okay. R. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so tell me, tell me about your name, Lil. So where are you now getting clarity? Um, in that's chapter four. We talked a lot about that. Chapter five is what he calls next level money. I like to call it next level money because of next juice. But he talks about the three levers that you that are in charge of your financial situation. There are savings and investing. There are expenses. We've talked a lot about those two already. So you can adjust that. You can lower your expenses. Increase your savings and investing, though. That's the movement that you're trying to make in order to get you closer to the, your number that you want to be at so you're fin that you're financially free. But the third lever, I don't remember where I was going with my hands, uh, is the money coming in. Increasing the, your cash flow, increasing the amount of money that you're actually making. So right now I'm doing this in a pretty big way, a pretty scary way, where I'm pursuing my master's degree in clinical mental health counseling so I can become a licensed professional counselor and make money as a counselor. My friend is a counselor. She just told me the other day, I didn't realize this, that she makes $100 for a 45-minute session from Medicaid. That was very encouraging to me. That 
caused me to realize that if I see 20 clients in one week, that takes 15 hours of my time, and I could be making about $100,000 a year from that alone. And if I could do that, then I could probably continue to broadcast, maybe even three hours a day, seven days a week, and make the money from this as well, and do what I really, really love. I mean, counseling I think I'll love too, but it's also a lot of like, you know, you're you're taking on a lot of issues that people have and people may or may not want to improve or change their lives. So it's like, it's a very stressful position, but it's also a lot better paid than I realize. I just wanted to become a counselor because I want to help the people that I've met through this community that come to me with anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, um, PTSD, and more, and be able to help them on a more real level, a clinical level, like actually be able to give them tools and help them as a therapist rather than just a friend who listens to them. And I think that's good, but I want more. I want to take it to the next level. So this is actually a way that I can earn income that I didn't even really realize was a big income opportunity. So that's very encouraging for me. And I've also now since reading this book realize the value of a side hustle so just looking keeping your eyes and ears out looking on craigslist looking on the, he, he puts a he has a bunch of different websites he gives you in here where you can just look for people who need help with things you just never know it could be temporary it could be more just look for ways that you can help ways that you can generate extra money there is a book called side hustle by chris gilbo which is one that i read i think earlier this year that's pretty interesting you can check that out but just Every day that you're checking in with your money, so you're checking in with your savings and investing, you're checking in with your cash flow, you're checking in with your expenses, and you're checking in with your net worth. So every single day, as much as possible, you're, having, you're building this relationship with your money that we've been talking about this whole time. And when you do that, spend like five minutes every day thinking about what are some ways that I can make more money? If you have your own business, maybe it's a new product, it's a new service. If you work for someone else, maybe it's getting a raise, getting a promotion, taking on some extra... Um, duties. Who knows what it is for you? He, he takes you through in here too for employees out there. He takes you through a step-by-step -step process to evaluate your net worth to the job market, to the company that you work for and the job market in general so that you can present this to your superiors, you, whoever's in charge of giving you a raise or promotion in a way that will make it much easier for you to obtain, obtain that increase. Um, and also he, he talks about um, What's he called? Hack your nine to five. Use your full-time job as a launching pad to freedom. So I didn't really read that chapter because I don't do that, and I really hope that I don't have to go back to doing that. Thank you, our club and David, for supporting during this broadcast, and Frankie and Vipul and Luis and Brad and Mark for the super hearts and helping me to not hopefully have to go back and do that more because I would much rather do this. Number six, is it worth it? This is about checking in before you expend, before you spend money. Is it worth it? Is it worth the money? Hi, La Pianiste. Thank you, Ara. Thank you, thank you. What, Cobra? What, and the poor. What, what do you mean by that? What are you, what are you trying to communicate here? Um, the only budget you'll ever need. I forget what, what that is even really about. It says how to live for free and increase your savings rate at least 25%. He talks about like house hacking. He talks about um, renting out rooms of your house crashing with people for free, you know, doing cat sitting. Cat sitting is much easier to do than dog sitting, house sitting. Um, if I'm in a situation where I have two young stepchildren, like a lot of this stuff is just not really an option for me. But what is really interesting to me was the almost next chapter. We talked about everything else. So chapter 11, which was about real estate investing. I've never really been interested in real estate investing prior to reading this book. So shout out to Grant Sabatier for nailing that because I've always been very averse to it. I like stock investing, I like businesses, but real estate was really interesting to me as I read this book. And my boyfriend just so happens to be a real estate broker and he knows a lot about this. He's done it for like 10 years and he's really proficient and, and successful at what he does. He's not like Trump successful, you know, but he like he gets it. He does well. His clients love him. I love seeing him work. He's such a great problem solver. Like he just he speaks the language. He gets it way more than I do. So as I was reading the book, I was kind of running ideas past him. And I'm at the point now. And we were in Florida when I was finishing reading this book. And Florida is my favorite place that I've ever lived. And I would love to live there again. So however, our kids are young and their mom is here. So we're not going anywhere because we're here with the kids. But we go to Florida pretty regularly-ish, you know, every couple of months or so. So we would like to have a house there. And I was thinking, well, that could be my first house that I ever buy because I've never purchased a house myself. 
I could buy a house down there where the property taxes are very low and rent it out for the time that we're not there. So I could potentially get when I'm when we're not there because we only go for maybe a week at a time, usually less than a week, generate income the th the you know what seven to. 11 weeks because I mean we really don't go there every two months maybe like once every three months and during that time to rent it out Airbnb or, or some option that outside of Airbnb that's similar um, home away I think is another one that's similar to Airbnb rent it out to people who want to who are visiting Florida during those times maybe even get it to cover the mortgage and then go and enjoy the space when we're there and if it covers the mortgage that's awesome if it does more than cover the mortgage and actually generates income I'm gonna be hooked I'm gonna be addicted I'm gonna to want to buy more houses and all sorts of stuff now as a business owner who is tries to be very smart about my tax strategy my debt to income ratio I have no debt but my income is not great so Getting a loan for a house might be challenging for me. I think he's, not I think, but he's talking about partnering up on it, which would be pretty cool. Maybe we can get another one of our friends who also loves Florida to partner up with us on something. In that case, we could probably have a much nicer situation. Um, if we can get like a duplex where they have one part, we have one part, we can rent those out separately, you know, as much as we want and kind of work together on something like that. That's a pretty cool idea. So real estate tends to appreciate much more than the stock market does um, it's it's something that you can't always swing um, but if you can and if you can get tenants in there and you could you could even just pay a property management company and not have to do a lot of that work yourself it could be very profitable a lot of people try to do real estate they try to become real estate agents they buy and sell homes they don't have a lot of success with it people try to flip properties and have big failures I mean there's a lot of things that can go wrong it's what I would call like a high risk situation, especially when you're new to it and you're not very educated upon it. But I am more interested in it now than I ever have been since reading this book and it got me really, really excited. So there's that. Not to down the real estate, if comfortable with stocks, real estate investing is alternative, less risk, maybe less reward. Um, I don't really agree with that um, that it would be less risk because because I don't know a lot about it I'd say it's more risk because I'm like if I'm investing in, a, in the Vanguard ETF total market index fund I'm paying 0.3 percent for them to manage that fund and I don't have to know anything <laughs> I don't have to do anything I just put my money in there and like do nothing so to me I mean there's really like there's no risk in that very very little risk and this is also so what I've done is create a Roth IRA so he talks a lot in here too about tax um, I was gonna say tax deferred but not just tax deferred but tax what's the word that I'm looking for here like um, basically things that are tax protected from tax like tax alternatives to taxed investments so IRAs 401ks. So there's some that you pay your tax up front, you pay your income tax and then you invest it and you don't have to pay tax on your gains. You don't have to pay capital gains tax like a Roth IRA and I think a traditional IRA as well. Or there's deferred tax where you don't you can actually write off the money that you put into account an account out of your income so you don't have to pay that income tax now, but then you might have to pay the tax on the gains later on. So if you work for a company, 401k, oftentimes your employer is matching the amount of money you're putting into it. So it's like free money. So of course you want to max that out. Um, a Roth, the more money that you make, the less you can put into an IRA or a Roth IRA. So that's challenging because you want to do that now. You want to do it while you're not making as much money because as you make more money, you won't be able to put as much money into it. And that's a tax protected um, in, in the future, you won't have to pay tax on the gains if you make gains. Hopefully, you make gains um, on the future when you take it out. So I created my first Roth IRA, IRA after reading this book. I opened it, finally opened it, put some money into the Vanguard. I feel like $1,000, but it was something, okay? And the max that I can put in this year is $6,000. So I'm hoping to grow the cojones and just do it and just be like, it's okay. I'm not going to see this money, be able to touch this money for 30 years. And it's going to be worth so much more than I'll be so happy that I did this and try to just keep doing that each year. And I'm going to do that. Not that I hope that I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to. <laughs> and I encourage you to do the same thing. I heard there will be a real estate bubble next year. Is it true? Well, I can't see the future.
Yep, Roth is post-tax investment. Won't owe tax on your future investment, right? Which is a beautiful thing because it's if it grows, right, it's less that you're paying that tax on now and because you're making less money now, hopefully, than you will be in 20, 30 years or 10 years, however long, you are paying a lower income tax bracket than you will be at that age anyway. So it's it's good stuff. Now again, you can only put $6,000 into it for the entire year and a lot of people are going to have a lot more than that that they need to invest. So he talks about a lot of different options and one is just straight up investing. That's like the last one. Your last resort is taxed investing where you invest into the stock market and you have to pay capital gains tax on any money that you make from that. And that's your last resort, but if you have a lot of money and you're trying to invest it, you're going to be definitely having to do that unless you go the route of doing mainly real estate investing and there's all like the real estate investing where you can if you just keep like flipping and flipping and flipping you can kind of um, keep bundling and pushing your gains off into the future and uh, avoiding paying tax on those things however it's very illiquid it's really like a stock you can sell really quickly um, a house not quite as liquid vice versa you expect to make less in retirement so you should be in a lower tax bracket. You expect to make less in retirement? I don't want to make less. Yes, be liquid. Hi, hi, Sean. Someone's up late. Yeah, Skywalker, I know, and I'm going to be up so much later. I have so much stats homework to finish. I'm not even halfway through it, and I have to finish all of that and then take the quiz by midnight tomorrow night, and I have to write a one to two page paper about child abuse for my psychology class by tomorrow night at midnight. And I don't think I've been engaging with the discussion boards as well as I should have. It was a very busy week for me. I canceled the content creator program. I, um, I'm doing an extracurricular activity with our kids, which is two nights a week. And um, we were in Florida last week, and we had the kids five days this week. So it's like every other week it's five days or two days. So five days, two days. So in the five-day weeks, it's always a lot. And there was something else. Um, oh, the book reviews email, which always takes me like hours and hours of a whole day. So Tuesday was the content creator program. Wednesday was the book reviews email. Awesome stuff. I think creating a lot more value, protecting my ability to continue doing this as well as creating a potential future for myself. But it was a very busy week and my schoolwork kind of got procrastinated to the last minute. Today we had a really great day with the kids and it was a really great day, but I'm like, I am never going to sleep and tomorrow I'm not going to be able to see them at all because I'm just going to be burying myself in schoolwork. But anyway, let me get this done so at least that's something off the, off the list. Oh, so late, I almost thought it was a replay. I, I feel like I'm usually up pretty late on here. You can enjoy your retirement more. Thank you, R. It's a lot. It's, yeah. I mean, I probably shouldn't have taken six classes this semester. That's 18 credits. It's, and I'm only, only four of the classes are actually engaged right now. Like, another one starts in a, one week, pretty much a week. It starts on the Monday after this one, I think October 7th. And then the last one starts... I think three weeks after that or something. I don't know. But it's going to be... Most of my content is going to be me doing schoolwork, and I'm doing my best. This broadcast was so close to getting thrown out the window and just being me working on stats homework, but I was like, this. I have. To, I said I was going to do this, and I have to do it. I have to have good quality content, or no one's going to pay me, and I have to get paid so that I can afford to pay for school. It's like this whole thing. It's this whole thing, but it's not your problem. It's my problem, and here we go. And you guys have, are helping me, so I appreciate it. Let me continue to earn that by finishing up this book review. Um... That's pretty much it. So when you're when you, they say living off your investments for the rest of your life, what you do is you have all of your money that's invested, and then you take out just as much money as you need to live off of for it that month or that year, however you want to do it, which is hopefully going to be like three to four percent of what you have invested that you take out. I have a friend who does this successfully at like age like forty, I guess. I don't know exactly how old he is, but. He is my goals in life right now. <laughs> like, I will be you in 10 years. I just turned 29. I'm like, yes, I love this. I love that you do this. I love that it's real. Not just written in a book, but that my friend does this successfully. And it's just so awesome. It's very exciting. And it made me really energized and excited. So that's what we're, we're working towards. And um, the, the beauty of that, rather than cashing out all of the money and turning it back into cash, we talked about the downsides of cash a lot already, but also the power of compounding. So if you just take just as much as you need to survive off of, then not survive, but live off of, however you live, um, just the amount of expenses that you have for the month, then the rest of that money can continue to compound and grow. So you're taking as little as possible out of there 
each month or however often each year so that the rest can continue to compound and grow. So every time you take it, it's potentially a smaller percentage of the total nut. Thank you, R. Good luck, all. Yeah, good luck. Good luck, everyone. You bet. I love you. Thank you so much. Huge, huge, huge thank you to our club for sending $100 during this broadcast and making my whole night and day. If you look at the amount of super hearts I've been getting over the past few days, I'm just like, they hate me. No one likes me anymore. What am I going to do? So thanks for helping me battle some of that negative self-talk. I really can't express how much I appreciate that. Thank you, David, for sending what he calls his monthly rent, which is $10 a month. Appreciate that. Deb in the broadcast, she's a $10 a month sponsor. Someone else in the broadcast, anonymous sponsor who doesn't want to be thanked, so thank you. You know who you are. And super heart senders, thank you, Luis. Thank you, Frankie, who's our top contributor. I do personally shout out and thank the top super heart contributor from every single broadcast throughout the month. So in just next week, just in a few days, it'll be October, and I'm going to shout out all the top contributors through the month of September because I really appreciate you guys so much. Um, thank you, Vapool. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Mark. Huge thank you to everyone that makes this channel possible. Thank you, 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 thank you. All you lovely souls who have contributed over the last 30 days. Um, remember, check out the website, nextjuice.com slash support. That's where you can sign up for the free book reviews and summaries email, which I only send out three times a year, once every four months. So you don't have to sit through an hour and a half of me talking about a book. Instead, you can just get the little blurb. I did write about this book already on the book review that I sent out on this past Wednesday. So go check it out. It's, it's on the website too. So even if you missed it, you can click and, and view the previous ones I've sent out so you can see what it's all about and know that it's not some weird sales pitch or whatever landing page. It's really literally just me writing about books. <laughs> And tell, giving a little update on the channel, too. I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> Huge thank you to everyone that makes this channel possible. And you can also check out the support page. I do have an Amazon wish list, which has a bunch of other books I'd love to read and review. You can pick one of those and send it to me, and I will read and review it right now. The next one I'm working on is 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. I've talked about it a little bit already live. I usually do that. I get a little excited before doing the formal review. I just kind of talk about what it's about so far. That one was from Shara, who bought that off the Amazon wish list. So thank you to Shara for that. That'll be the next one we do on YouTube and on Periscope. So make sure you're following and subscribed. I also hope that you guys have a lovely friggin' Saturday night and rest of the week. And I'll be back tomorrow for three more hours of positive content to help you reach your health wealth and relationship goals. This has been a moment in time with Taylor. Hope to see you on the next juice.